Hello everyone and welcome back to Bellycast. On today's episode with Professor David Kachlik, who is the Head of Anatomy and the Vice Dean of International Students, we'll be talking about the subject of anatomy, histology and embryology and he will also give you some advice on how to successfully pass the interview from your entrance exams. So I hope you enjoy! Hello, and thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Bellycast. Would you mind introducing yourselves to us and our listeners? Hello, it's my pleasure to be here. My name is David Kachlik, and I am the Vice Dean for International Students and Entrance Exam of the Second Faculty of Medicine, Charles University. Thank you so much. So in today's episode, I would like to ask you about exactly how um, you view the first year studies in the anatomy, histology, embryology subject for our first year students. Can maybe if you have some advice for them on how to do their best. So to start off, would you mind describing how the anatomy subject works? Yeah, the anatomy, histology and embryology is the fundamental subject in the first year. And it combines uh, two departments, anatomy and histology embryology. And uh, it is, of course, composed of lectures and practicals and then uh, two dissection weeks. Uh, the knowledge is tested by common tests after uh, specific units. And we have altogether uh, more than 20 OPs tests, either oral or written, in both semesters. Mm -hmm. And the students uh, first go through a system of lectures and the lectures are also recorded online on YouTube channel so they can review them. And they then they continue with practical trainings either in a slide room where they see the historical slides and they talk about what they can see or in uh, anatomical classes which can be uh, either using uh, dry specimens like bones or they can be seminars or... They can use sweat specimens in the dissection hall or ultrasound or some other techniques. And then at the end of this specific unit, there's a, a test. Uh, if it's oral, it's just an examination using the specimens. If it's written, then we have 30 or 40 questions, which are... Uh, uh, this test is performed in, in the lecture hall, so all students has, has, have got the same question, the same test. And they are projected on the screen and there's a specific time, uh, 30 seconds for shorter questions uh, and 40 to 70 seconds to larger questions. And that's it. Thank you so much. Um, so you mentioned that it's two departments cooperating together. Does that mean that the uh, topics that are being taught in histology and anatomy, they're being taught at the same time? So if you're doing, let's say, respiratory system and anatomy, they should be the same time in histology teaching? Yeah, the sh students should perceive it as one subject. Mm -hmm. So even the lectures and the content can be combined uh, and the practicals are in the same week. So the students talk about the, the same topic, so they understand it from macroscopical and uh, microscopical point of view. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. And would you mind uh, kind of describing exactly how uh, what happens if a student doesn't pass their first attempt of a test? You said they would be at the end of every topic, so are there any options? Is that the end of their studies? What happens? Uh, there is a general rule of three attempts. Mm -hmm. So for every test and even for the final exam, there are three attempts. So if the student fails, then he or she can retake it twice. And for these retakes, uh, we have a special time period. It's called exam period. So the first retakes are, uh, say, at the beginning of the exam period and the second retakes are at the end of uh, this period. And for these three attempts, we have four possibilities. So the students can choose one of these. And the last possibility, for example, for the winter credits are in the summer examination period. So let's talk about bones. So the student is examined in October after the specific unit in bones. If he or she fails, then the first retake can be done uh, in mid of January and the second at the beginning of February or it can be postponed, so skip the 
term and it can be the last term which is at the beginning of June mm -hmm. and for the summer semester it's similar so for example brain is tested in May and the first and second retake can be in June or it can be postponed to uh, beginning of uh, September when there are the last retakes of summer mm -hmm. semester credits and for the final is the same students can take it uh, again three times so can repeat it twice and there are enough uh, terms in uh, June and then in September uh, there are three weeks examination period so until 20th of September approximately mm -hmm. and the students can take uh, even the exam like on Monday one term and on Wednesday the other term there is no uh, a limit between the two exams. Okay. You mentioned the word credits, tests and exams. So just for our listeners that are not completely familiar with these terms, I will describe them a little bit. So tests are smaller than exams and credits, we think of them as tokens, right? So you have to get every credit from that subject before you can enter the exam. And then once you pass the exam, that's when you fully complete it, the entire course. So for anatomy, it's two semesters, right? So... The only final examination happens in June, if that is. Yeah. June. Or September. Or is September. <laughs> okay, perfect. But um, if the student did fail, let's say, once or twice, and then in September they decide not to take their attempt, that's it, right? There's no more additional dates after September. Yes, all the dates are known uh, in October, so the students can plan it and there will be nothing added. So the students know what they can afford, but there is nothing above it. Perfect, thank you. And could you maybe go into a bit more detail about how our practical sessions work? If there is uh, with the wet specimens, for example, you know, uh, how do the lecturers or teachers approach the students? Is it more individual, more, no? <laughs> Yeah, the practical takes two and a half hour and uh, this, there are usually two groups of students all together. So we can say like 30 students, mm -hmm. but they are subdivided into usually four groups uh, according to the number of uh, lecturers. The lecturers are either young physicians or all older students who already passed anatomy and decided to help us as demonstrators during dissections and then become lecturers. Mm -hmm. So we split the students into these groups. At the beginning, there can be an introductory, like a lecture or repetition of the most important facts, or it can be aimed at some very complicated parts, which should be explained to all of the students. It's followed by a short discussion, and then the group is split into smaller groups, and based on the topic, the students uh, and then they rotate on the topic. So we can talk about uh, gastrointestinal tract, the, yeah, the digestive system. It's uh, composed of um, studying separate organs in one group. Then the other group can study the organs, uh, how they are arranged in the body inside the abdominal cavity. So they see the open cadaver and they go through and see the relationships and the topography. And the other group can... Uh, they use ultrasound to see how the organs are uh, arranged inside when it's covered with the skin and it is necessary to examine it by an imaging method. And ultrasound is, is a nice method that the students can play even themselves with the probe. Mm -hmm. So they see the body in 50 shades of grey. <laughs> and then there can be some models or uh, and other methods of imaging that does uh, the teacher goes through uh, uh, scans from MRI or from CTs and they can discuss the things together about this. Perfect. And you mentioned the uh, dissections weeks. Could you maybe go into more detail on how those work for students, especially the first one? It can be very stressful. <laughs> yeah, the dissection week is meant to uh, cover three topics. One topic is to meet uh, the first patient of the student because the body of the dead donor is the real first patient even if he or she is dead uh, not breathing uh, the body is not warm it's still the first patient and the students learn how to approach uh, their first patient with uh, 
how to uh, take credit to them because they are voluntary donors mm -hmm. and how to um, how to behave ethically uh, everywhere where the patient is. The second dimension is the topographical anatomy because from the books it's obvious but if if you look at a map of a city it's an eye but if you explore the city yourself that's the real topography mm -hmm. and the same is in the dissection hall that you really explore the relationship of the structures in the body and you have enough time for that because it takes one week and it's the whole afternoon and the third dimension is to learn to work with tools so the students have scalpel tweezers scissors and they learn how to cut the tissue and the main purpose is to learn to work with the tools mm -hmm. to know which uh, force you need to to cut a structure how gently you have to be and how to handle uh, the tools so this action week it's one of those topics and is concluded with an oral examination could you maybe give our future students some advice on how to handle oral examinations because it might be very new for most of our students Yeah, oral examination is uh, is a discussion. So there comes a question, and the answer is never one word or two words. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer is, well, you can again use a geography. So when my question comes, okay, can you explain us something about uh, cities in Germany? Then your answer is not Berlin. Mm -hmm. And it would be, oh, there are small and large cities, and the largest city is Berlin, which is the capital which is located uh, in the former east part of the country, but there are also some other cities. And we can approach the cities from the point of view that they are industrial cities or historical places, or they are crowded or not crowded, they are on the rivers, they are on highways. And the same comes in the anatomy. So the students have to discuss and have to bring reasons and have to explain why. So anatomy can, can be perceived as a subject just Uh, describing and just memorizing things but that's not true all the term uh, have to all the terms have to be understood and should be explained and our question is why mm -hmm. so the students should also themselves pose questions why and we come to the to the way how to study anatomy mm -hmm. And my advice is to have uh, several kind of uh, sources. One of them can be a book which we wrote, a memorix, but that's a book which gives you a frame and which serves for repetition. Mm -hmm. So the students should go superficially through this book and then they should open any uh, book with fluent text. So it should be a textbook, but it can be an application which we have. So it can be Kenhub, it can be Wikipedia, They should read it there. They should uh, match these two sources. Then they should open some atlas to see how the structures uh, really look like. And then they can use up some videos. That's one part. And then the other part comes and that's the discussion between the students. So they should go for a walk, for a tea or coffee, and they should talk about it. They should make a fun and they should post questions, answer questions, and the, Answering should be also not one word, mm -hmm. but explanatory one. And then the students fix actively the memories. And then finally, before the test, they just open the book, they review it and say, yeah, I know, I know, I don't know this. So they just call their friend and this works. So what I really recommend is to have a cluster of people with whom you stay. Thank you. That is very valuable advice. And just to kind of add on what you said with the thinking about why things are the way they are. I think it's really amazing and our faculty teaches it as one subject with histology and embryology because when you think about the human body, it's not just what is where or what it connects to, but how does it work? What does it actually do? And that's exactly what the histology tells you, especially, for example, the gastrointestinal system or the embryology will explain to you why things got to the places where they are. So. In And it also emphasizes the developmental defects because these are the things with which kids and adults come then uh, when they can have uh, problems with their uh, digestive system. It can be based on uh, uh, impaired development. Mm -hmm. So we explain the developmental defects. So the embryology nicely explains why it happens. 
but then really learns the developmental defects and we even try the students to think how would you try to solve the defect yeah and they can do general think yeah we can use a surgery for this maybe or not and we try then to correct them so that's why we pose the questions why because the students try to think how to diagnose how to treat even if it's on a superficial way they already feel a touch of medicine in this Yeah, exactly. That's what was one of my favorite parts about anatomy in my first year is that it makes you feel like you are actually studying medicine and not just memorizing structures. And it actually helps a lot in the upper years now that I can link that knowledge with what is being taught later and later. So even from my point of view as an upper year student, my advice is don't just memorize because you really do need to know it for the rest of, you know, your medical career. And uh, so Yeah, that kind of brings me to my next part of this interview is you're also the vice dean. That means you interview our applicants and students who want to uh, study here. So can you kind of describe how the uh, interview process works? Yeah, the interview process is based on uh, some ethical topics and the ethical topic serves to start a discussion And uh, we try in this interview to push the student into corner and try to uh, ask him or her to talk about the pros and cons. So we can we can choose randomly one of the topics, like uh, for example, neglected child. Mm -hmm. So what happens when a physician uh, sees a neglected child? So what he or she has to do? what uh, should not be done, how he or she should react, uh, what are the legal things behind. And the student, we do not examine the knowledge, but we examine the attitude of the student, how the student should behave, and we try to give him another obstacles, and he has to go across the obstacles, tell us what I would do in this unpleasant situation. And so what we really judge are the communication skills and the ethical attitude and uh, the way how to react in a stressful situation because medicine, the study is a stressful situation and then handling with the patient who can be aggressive or is also a very stressful situation. So this this is the aim of our interview. Thank you. And is there any advice that you would give anyone considering applying here, with, especially maybe with that interview? Uh, no, no. I think uh, the f second faculty of medicine um, offers you a hard six years of, of work, of study. But uh, what we really enjoy are the students who are motivated, who wants to work, wants to discuss. And so that's why such students should apply. The students who would like to uh, not reach their limits, but break their limits thank you and maybe uh, I have had some younger students ask me before they apply or after they get in if there is something they should prepare before starting their studies you know the three months of the summer after they graduated high school and they're getting ready for their medical studies is there something that you would recommend for them to read do well they can start to learn Czech language Because they will spend six years in, in Prague and it's, it's good to speak the language of the country and of the patient. Mm -hmm. They may go through some uh, basics of anatomy and Latte, which we have on our website, really superficial ones. So the start is smoother. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's everything that we could give our prospective students about the subject of anatomy and histology and embryology. So thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you very much for the invitation and we are looking forward to meeting uh, new students, new applicants who will successfully pass the entrance exam and who will apply and we have the fresher week for them. Thank you so much. Bye bye.